Hello, it's John, the Old Geek, and I'm back with another old school AD&D video. In this video, I'll be looking at a real oldie, Module C2, The Ghost Tower of Inverness. C2 was written by Alan Hammack and used for the tournament at Wintercon in 1979. It was then released by TSR in 1980 as the second module in the competition series. I will try not to repeat what I've already said in my other reviews of tournament adventures, at least not too much, that is regarding the nature of tournament modules, but it is impossible to evaluate the adventure thoroughly and objectively without the occasional mention of tournaments. Okay, it might be more than occasional. Let's get presentation out of the way first, as always. It's basic. It looks its age, but it works. The front cover art commits the cardinal sin of not relating to the module itself, but at least it's colourful and dynamic. The back cover is more applicable, and it, uh, that does relate to one of the module's more memorable encounters. Internally, the, the uh, font is a little cluttered, but the text is clear and to the point. Box text is a little mixed. Rather than simply describe the room, it occasionally gives a little too much information or assumes the adventurers are paying close attention to certain features. Internal art is generally small and sometimes simplistic, but it does its job. The most pleasing part of the presentation, though, is the selection of room diagrams and handouts, which are clear and effective and useful to both players and DMs. Okay, so what of the adventure itself? Well, sadly, the title is very misleading. There are no ghosts, no mad Scotsman in kilts, and no magical pools of whiskey. A shame on all three counts. The Ghost Tower of Inverness is a funhouse dungeon in the vein of White Plume Mountain. It's a traditional dungeon crawl with no real story elements, but with a focus on combat and puzzle solving. Many of the puzzles are themselves combat situations made more difficult by the environment. Yep, it's a true tournament module designed to test the players. The very limited storyline, what there is of it, goes on about the characters being forced to go to the tower to recover an artifact called the Soul Gem. It's similar in that sense to the opening to Pharaoh, but much more forgivable as this adventure is short, a two to three session affair, rather than an extended campaign. Plus, the DM notes at the start also suggest that the listed introduction be only used to set up a tournament game and that the DMs should adapt it to fit their own game. I say yes to this. The module makes clear which sections are designed for tournament play and which bits have been added for the purpose of a campaign game. The extra encounters tend to be more combat based and seem to be there to serve the purpose of simply making the module last a little longer. The original tournament was set for three hours and of course campaign players do not have the same time limit. But those added encounters make the module more difficult. Note the levels on the cover. It states it is designed for characters of levels 5 to 7. There are five tournament characters provided and they are levels 7 through 10 and all have maximum hit points for characters of those levels, including a 10th level magic user with an extensive spellbook. I ran this for my campaign group, a fairly well-equipped party of about 8 characters averaging level 6. I used the extra campaign locations, but had to tone down a number of the encounters, as it was all very tough indeed. The creatures in the module are difficult enough for the levels involved in a straight fight, but the fights are rarely straightforward, as there are tight staircases and areas of deep water and reverse gravity to deal with. So with the uh, suggested level limits already being a little wonky for campaign play, the DM notes mention it could also be run with a larger party of lower level PCs. And that would be absolute carnage. But I can imagine it being great fun, something akin to the DCC character funnel but with 3rd, 4th and 5th level PCs. As a dungeon, the Ghost Tower of Inverness is extremely linear. Yes, there are multiple ways into the tower, but the party have to explore 
every one of these in order to find the four bits of the thing they need to get to the centre. And once they have gained access, they have to pass through a fixed series of element-based locations in order to reach the Soul Gem. The added campaign encounters tend to simply fill locations that were otherwise empty in the original tournament version. But despite this linearity, the puzzles are interesting and should appeal to a creative group who enjoy this type of scenario. Ultimately, comparisons have to be drawn with S2 White Plume Mountain, generally regarded as the daddy of all fun houses. The two modules are similar in their tone and their aims. Sadly, Ghost Tower doesn't quite manage the sheer fun levels of White Plume though. While there are some highly imaginative puzzles within the tower, and especially in the later challenges towards the end of the module, White Plume Mountain managed to pull it all off more consistently. There was also more meat in S2's locations. Yes, both are fairly short adventures. C2 only has 11 pages of actual adventure text, the rest of it being background, tournament notes, handouts and pre-generated character information. And I believe White Plume Mountain was about 16 pages in total, but White Plume Mountain just felt more substantial. My current copy here came incomplete from eBay. It was very cheap as a result. A number of the handout pages are missing and the booklet feels very lightweight because with those gone there's not a lot left. I would have liked to have seen a bit more in the way of campaign development, maybe some extra map sections to give it more depth. There's a lot of empty space in the tournament characters section which could have been used for more adventure while still keeping the entirety of the module within the 32 page limit that was the norm. So it is somewhat sparse, too short, lacking in campaign material and too linear. But despite those much deserved criticisms, I rather like the Ghost Tower of Inverness. My players really enjoyed its challenging blend of combat and brain work that it demanded from them, and I got plenty of satisfaction out of running it. And as I've said with regards to other adventures, we need to assess them based on what they were trying to achieve. C2 is a fun house. It is fun, but it is also flawed. I can see it working very nicely as a tournament, and that of course was its original purpose. So, I suppose you want a rating, and with those flaws and the fact that there are no rabid haggises running around, no Scotsman in kilts and no whiskey. But the fact it is fun, I'm going to give it 7 out of 10. I think that's a fair reflection for what it offers. Well, thanks for watching once again and thanks for supporting my channel. When I started the channel I was hoping for maybe 20 or 30 subscribers willing to watch an old grog blather on. I now have over 260 <laughs> and I am getting some requests to review specific adventures but bear in mind I am very particular in that I will only review modules that I have played because going through the process of running a module gives you a much better idea of whether something is good or not and how it can be made better. So. With that in mind, I'm going to post a list of all the game scenarios I have run in recent years that I've not yet reviewed. And it's up to you guys to choose what I do next. Let me know in the comments. Good night.